Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how to use differentials. In this case, we're going to be using it on an interesting little physics problem. It says, uh, what will the change in the period of the pendulum be? I guess I forgot the word be. If the length of the pendulum is changed from 1 meter to 1.01 meter. All right, so imagine a pendulum which has a mass at the bottom here and the pendulum has a certain amount of length and it swings back and forth and the period would be the time that it takes for the pendulum to swing one way and then back to where it started. The period, let's say P for period, is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length divided by the acceleration due to gravity, G. All right, so let's first figure out what the period will be when the pendulum length is 1 meter. So the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of 1 divided by 9.8 because the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second square. So working this out, we get 1 divided by 9.8, take the square root, and I multiply it times 2, and I multiply it times 3.14159, which is pi, and the period is exactly 2.007 seconds. 2.007 seconds. So, how much will our pendulum, the period, change if we make the, the pendulum length one centimeter longer from one meter to 1.01 meter. So we could, of course, plug in 1.01 and get the value, but I wanted to show you how differentials really help us solve any kind of problem like this. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative of P with respect to L, and in order to do that better, let's rewrite the equation as 2 pi divided by the square root of G, because G is a constant, times L to the one-half power because L, the square root of L is the same as L to the one half power. So if we're not going to take the derivative of that, dP dL, that is equal to the constant 2 pi divided by the square root of G times one half L to the minus one half power. And so we could write this as dP dL is equal to 2 pi divided by 2 times the square root of G times 1 over L to the 1 half power, and of course these two uh, cancel each other. All right, so now we have an equation that describes the change in the period with respect to the change in L. If we now move the DL over to the other side, we now can say that the change in the period is equal to pi divided by the square root of G times 1 over L, or 1 over the square root of L. So all we have to do now is plug in the change in L, Oh, I'm forgetting something. I need the DL over here. There, that's better. I can't forget my other differential. So I'm moving my DL over here, I, right there. And um, now what I can say is, if I know the change in the length, I know the original length, I can then find the change in the period. So let's try that. The change in the period is equal to pi divided by the square root of g times 1 over the original length, so the original length would be 1 meter, and I'm going to change it by 0 0.01. All right, the fact that it looks like it's going to be positive means that the period is probably going to be increased. It's going to be a positive change. It could have been a negative change, but in this case, it's a positive change. So let's plug that in. So we have 3.14159, which is pi, uh, times 0 0.01, which is the change in the length of the pendulum, and then we divide that by the square root of g. 9.8 square root equals, and that means that the change in the length of the period is 0 0.01, and of course that would be in terms of seconds. So if the original period was 2.007 seconds, and we change the length of the pendulum by 1 centimeters, we have to add this much to it, so that the new period would be equal to the original 2.007 seconds plus the added 0.01 seconds, and so that would be equal to 2.017 seconds, and that would be the new period a little bit longer than before. So again, here's a really good example of how you can use differentials to find the change in something when the variable that it depends on changes by a little bit. So 
a little bit of change in the L. When that was the original L, will give us a little change in the period. And that's how we do that. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed these. I'm beginning to really like differentials where I used to hate them as a student. So take a look at these and hopefully they'll help you understand what differentials are. Okay, until next time.